is more more than a national debt. As we know right now, our debt stands at 14.2 trillion dollars. 14.2 trillion dollars. Just to give you uh, an example from the 22nd district of how big that is, uh, we've got gas in the district, Johnson Space Center. If you stacked up 14.2 trillion dollars in dollar bills, you would have a stack that goes from here to the moon, back to the earth, back to the moon, back to the earth. Three one-way trips. Another way to break this down, each citizen shares, every one of you in this room, is on a per capita scale $45,846.30. Just under $46,000. Some beautiful little baby girl or baby boy who was born in Methodist Hospital right next to us here owes the federal government $46,000. This crisis is about our nation's future. Whether our children and grandchildren will enjoy the quality of life and the opportunities that we've had, or if we'll leave them with the legacy of debt. Make no bounds about it. We're in a crisis right now. If we don't act, we risk losing all that Americans have fought for, well, for well over 200 years. America faces a tidal wave of debt. In three decades, three decades from now, our debt will expand to more than three times the size of our economy. We've had high levels of debt before, right after World War II, but those were temporary increases in the size of government. Today's trajectory is catastrophic. We can, and frankly, must do better. America's history is about the unique opportunity given to each generation by the hard work and tough decisions made by the previous generation. We have always worked together to ensure that the next generation would inherit a future that was a stronger, more prosperous future, and more secure. The fact is that mandatory spending, the spending that's sort of on autopilot, has more than doubled in the last 45 years. The budget is increasingly consumed by mandatory spending and it's out of control. We have no choice but to make sensible reforms that will protect these safety net programs and maintain a stable and prosperous nation. Mandatory spending currently consumes roughly 67% of the federal budget. I'm sorry. 61%. It'll be 67 pretty quickly. <laughs> Even more troubling is how that picture looks if we maintain the status quo. By 2045 or sooner, every single dollar, every penny we raise in revenue will be spent on Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. This doesn't even include the cost of the new health care. It's basic math. We will never solve our budget challenges until we address the growth of mandatory spending, specifically our health care entitlements. Unsustainable government growth crowds out private sector and leads to negative economic consequences like higher taxes. Small businesses know they cannot grow and cannot create jobs under such conditions. And I constantly hear from people back home, the small business here, about how they must balance the budgets to meet their everyday expenses. They rightfully expect Washington, D.C. to do the same. Our nation's small business and employers deserve a Congress that stands ready to fix our dangerous fiscal situation without damaging our economic growth or raising taxes on the job creators. You can't help job seekers by raising taxes on job creators. The Republican budget plan that we passed last week puts our nation on a path to prosperity by cutting $6.2 trillion in spending from the President's budget over the next 10 years. Instead of letting deficits spiral out of control, it reduces this year's debt. .6, it's a $1.6 trillion deficit by one-third and puts an end to an era of trillion-dollar deficits. 
We've had three under this administration, the highest three in our, our country's history. Currently, also, the U.S. companies face one of the highest corporate tax burdens globally. Our budget keeps taxes low, so our economy can grow. The path to prosperity prevents the $1.5 trillion tax increase called for in the President's budget and provides us with a simpler, less burdensome tax code for households and small businesses. Specifically, our budget improves incentives for job creators to work, invest, and innovate in the U.S. by lowering the corporate tax rate from 35% which is the highest in the industrial world to a more competitive 25%. Yeah. The Path to Prosperity budget takes the steps necessary to avert a debt crisis and provides job creators with the confidence they need to start hiring today. If we follow the path, we will generate 1 million, 1 million private sector jobs in one year and get our unemployment down to 4% by 2015. America will be open for business again. I can assure you, I will continue to fight for common sense in Washington by fighting to lower the stranglehold of federal relations and reduce our debt to provide a better economic environment for growth. America is at a crossroads where we face tough decisions for our future. But let's roll up our sleeves and work together to ensure a prosperous future for the nation that we all love. America has faced many challenges in our history. We stood up and faced every one of them and beat them. We'll do it again. I would never, ever, bet against the United States of America. Never forget that you live in the greatest state, in the greatest nation that God has created on this earth. And before I close, I'd just like to recognize, uh, keep our leader, Ms. Gale, in your thoughts and prayers. Fort Bend County will not be the county it is without her leadership on this chamber. Thank you. Thank you all very much for this opportunity to talk with you. God bless Texas. God bless the United States of America. Thank you.